Recently, it seems there's been a lot of activity close to our moon. This comes in the form of unidentified flying objects. The most recent video comes from Facebook, with various groups sharing the footage. One thing that people can't agree on, though, is the size of the object. Some are saying that it's massive, while others have said the footage is suspicious. One individual said the object looks like a meteorite just collided with the moon, and that what we're looking at is the after effect. I've said that rather than being an asteroid, what we're looking at is an unidentified flying object. Interestingly, avid sky watchers have been sending in photographs and videos showing strange objects close to our moon. Although there's some that don't believe these objects are UFOs, many are of the opinion that they are. There's even some that have suggested the moon is not what we're being told. The most legitimate theory available at this time comes from the works of Russian researchers Michael Vassin and Alexander Shibagov, who put forward the idea of an artificial moon. They began to notice that the craters of the moon, regardless of the impact size or diameter, all equaled out in depth. They also noted that these craters had very shallow and flat interiors and in other areas even containing convex bottoms. They hypothesized that meteors are hitting an armored hole underneath the surface of the moon, preventing further depths inside the celestial body, and believing the moon may be a possible spaceship created by complex alien life. They said that this theory was only reinforced as the mathematics for the moon and its density became an apparent issue. Given its size, location, and general theorized mega, the moon should have a density of roughly 5.5 grams per cubic centimeter. However, given its orbital path and overall physics, we find the moon to only be 3.3 grams per cubic centimeter, causing the moon to be much less dense compared to our planet, despite theories of the moon's creation coming from materials of the Earth. It's true that we know more about what's going on the surface of the moon than what's happening within our very own oceans. Seen as one of the most unexplored areas of the planet, our oceans are teeming with incredible mysteries and strange occurrences that have left experts all around the world baffled and amazed since their discoveries. One of the great things about Google Earth is that it allows us to view various locations across the planet from the comfort of our home. Recently, an individual discovered something mysterious in the South Atlantic. The person who made the discovery described it as a grid-like formation. Not much information can be found out about this structure, but in recent years many of these have been found. It's been put forward that there's various anomalies that can be found under the oceans, saying that whatever this structure is, it has various right angles. One person suggested that it could have been part of an ancient civilization. Various historians have admitted that many civilizations have been lost to the Dems, but thanks to modern technology we are able to get a detailed look at them. Skeptics, however, went down a different route, suggesting that the structure could have been created by fishing grounds or ships in the area. However, amateur researchers have said that it looks like an underwater structure. This isn't the only underwater structure that researchers have found. Referred to as the British Atlantis, archaeologists have begun uncovering an area of submerged land that is referred to as the Lost World of Dogaland, and it's located off the coast of Europe. Roughly 12,000 years old, the North Sea was at a depth much lower than it is today. It was due to this much lower natural depth that back in 10,000 BC. The location was used as a primitive civilization site for a collection of Stone Age people. Researchers have been aware of this site for quite a while now, with many having theorized decades in the past that since the site was flooded after the end of the Ice Age, roughly 7,500 years ago, it would have held a number of Stone Age ruins all throughout the area. Unfortunately, efforts to better understand the site weren't made until technology could catch up with the expedition. One technology finally caught up with researchers' expectations, and a startling discovery was soon made. Deep in the North Sea, the site of Dogland was mapped in three-dimensional space, using radar imaging and helped uncover massive underwater megalithic structures similar in design to Stonehenge, proving to be the first ever attempt at major reconstruction in a marine environment. The 3D imaging has helped to elevate the researchers in the area and has been seen as a significant insight into the Mesolithic in Northwest Europe. As research continues in the area, 
only more information will be revealed to archaeologists, supporting possible theories of massive ancient civilizations predating the world's oldest human civilizations. As of today, the scientific community has said that fast radio bursts are not entirely understood. In fact, a number of these have been discovered, and if anything, the more we've studied them, the more we get confused. Fast radio bursts referred to as FRBs have always been a mystery for astronomers and scientists. But this new finding might help shed light onto what might be causing these strange signals. An international team of astronomers have just discovered a 157-day pattern of mysterious fast radio bursts. They've said that by further studying these mysterious signals, we may be able to track down where they're coming from and what causes them. In a paper published in Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, the team at the Jorder L. Bank Observatory at the University of Manchester said that their study has revealed this is only the second time that a repeating FRB has been discovered. The fast radio burst has been given the name of 121,102, and whatever it is, it keeps sending signals to our planet. With the researchers saying the FRB does this for around 90 days before going silent for 67 more days. The researchers behind the study said the following, This is an exciting result. As it's only the second system where we believe we see this modulation in burst activity. Detecting a periodicity provides an important constraint on the origin of the burst, and the activity cycles could argue against a preceding neutron star. This exciting discovery highlights how little we know about the origin of FRBs. Further observations of a large number of FRBs will be needed, and hopefully this will help us paint a clearer picture about these periodic sources and explain their origin. Another recent fast radio burst that made the news is that of FRB 180916.J0158-65. Interestingly, it made the news because every 16.3 days the signal followed a similar theme. Researchers have looked at the data and said that every four days it would spit out a burst. And then strangely it will go silent for the next 12 days. Not only would this be strange enough if it happened one time, but scientists have come forward and said that it keeps repeating this cycle, causing some to put forward the idea that it comes across as artificial rather than something that would occur naturally. It's not like this has only been happening for a few days either. Researchers in Canada have said this mysterious fast radio burst has been doing this for over 400 days. As of right now, the team have admitted they have no idea what it means, and that all this discovery has done is added more questions in regards to fast radio bursts. More study is needed to try and understand what these mysterious radio bursts are, and where they're originating from. Some have suggested these bursts could be messages from other civilizations, and interestingly, researchers have not ruled this out. It's exciting to think this could be from an advanced civilization. However, researchers at this moment in time are just trying to work out why they keep stopping and starting the way they do. Ancient Egypt has fascinated researchers for years. Every year, Egyptologists uncover new artifacts each one giving us an insight into what life would have been like thousands of years ago. Perhaps one of the most mysterious figures that lived during this era was that of Cleopatra. She is one of history's most recognizable figures, yet historians and researchers don't know much about her, and this has led to many archaeologists trying to uncover information that may give us an insight into our life. The lack of discoveries in regards to Cleopatra have interested many historians over the years. One of the most sought-after discoveries in the field of archaeology is that of the discovery of the lost tomb of Antony and Cleopatra. According to ancient accounts, after the Roman leader Augustus defeated Antony and Cleopatra back in 30 BCE, he permitted them to be buried together in the city of Alexandria located in Egypt. Despite this report in detailed announcement, Records elaborated that Antony had been cremated and placed into a large jar. However, Egyptologists and archaeologists are more than confident that the bodies of both rulers will be found mummified in a traditional Egyptian manner. Back in 2008 and 2009, popular Egyptologist Saha Hawass announced that with the discovery of the Temple of Osiris within the city of Alexander in Egypt, that he will be able to find the hidden tomb of Cleopatra and Antony. Unfortunately, 
despite more than 27 tombs being uncovered in 10 different mummies located in the region. Not one of the tombs was indicative of that of the long-lost tomb of Antony and Cleopatra. Recently, though, new evidence has come forward that could once and for all provide us with an answer to where she's buried. In a new documentary, Egyptologists and researchers have said the ancient ruler could be buried in a secret site close to the Nile Delta. Archaeologists who've been digging in the region around 60 miles from Cairo have said they think they're on the right track and that hopefully they'll be able to uncover Cleopatra. On the 21st of June, the Science Channel is launching a new special in which researchers will be digging in this region. The Science Channel said the following in a statement, In Egypt, on the edge of the Nile Delta, a massive archaeological dig is underway as experts search for the tomb of Egypt's most famous pharaoh. A new theory about Cleopatra's burial ground introduced by archaeologist Dr. Kathleen Martinez suggests her tomb may be found in a place known as Tapasaurus Magna. This location is said to be a hotspot for underground chambers and could once and for all put an end to the search for Cleopatra's tomb. It's also been noted that this is a place that hasn't been searched very much, so diggers are hoping this could be the final resting place of Cleopatra. Although not much is known about her whereabouts, her life and history has interested many people and she's been depicted in movies and TV shows. Edotologists are hoping this site could be the place of one of history's long-lost figures. The moon is perhaps one of the most photographed objects in the night sky. The reason for this is because of how close it is to our planet. With a basic telescope, you are able to take some incredibly detailed photographs of it. It's due to this that some have managed to capture things they didn't expect to. This is what happened to one person in England. The individual who took the photographs said the following. While looking through my telescope, I was able to get a good view of the moon. I live in Dorset, England, and down here we don't get many days where we can stargaze. However, this particular night was a good one. The moon was in clear view from where I was, so I decided to grab my telescope. I own a Schlesrin telescope and it's great for viewing the moon and planets. I didn't notice anything strange during my session. But when I got inside and flipped through the images, I noticed on one of them there was a strange-looking object. To me, it looks like a black triangle, and though it looks interesting, I've never seen anything like this before. I think it may have been a piece of space debris or an insect. I'm certain it wasn't a smudge on the telescope, as it wouldn't have been this detailed. I'm interested to hear what people's opinions are. It's not just this person that snaps something interesting close to our moon. With more and more people getting into stargazing and astrophotography, there's been some pretty strange finds that have even confused the most avid sky watchers. These black triangles are nothing new, with some amateur researchers saying that even NASA themselves have captured them before. These black triangles are associated with UFOs and have been reported by people from various locations across our planet for the last few decades. In fact, researchers have said they're one of the most common UFOs reported. Sightings of them typically follow a theme. People report seeing giant triangular objects in the sky that are completely silent. Sometimes they're just seen sitting in the sky motionless, while others are seen leaving a location at extremely high speeds. Interestingly, those who have researched these objects have said they come in waves and that for a short period of time many people will report seeing them. There's been around 4,000 reports of the Triangle UFOs since the 1990s in the UK alone. There have also been waves of Triangle UFO sightings in Belgium, France, Holland, and Germany. As of right now, various theories have been put forward to try and explain what they are. Some have said they're top-secret military crafts that are able to outmaneuver anything we currently have on this planet, while others have said they're not from this Earth. Whatever these objects are, they've been fascinating people for years, and it seems the reports of them are not going to slow down anytime soon. So what do you make of this interesting photograph? And do you think it shows one of these black triangle UFOs? Forest Grove sound in February 2016 the residents of Forest Grove, a small town in Oregon, United States, heard a high-pitched noise multiple times for several nights. 
At first, it was thought that the sound was caused by the equipment used by the Department of Forestry. However, the authorities determined that their equipment was not the cause of the sound. The residents of the city made videos of the sound, which went viral. The strange sound phenomenon was widely covered in mainstream media. Many videos of the sound are still present on the internet. The sound was heard in different parts of the city. Some people described the sound as a siren while others described it as a high-pitched flute sound. The sounds were mostly heard during the night and they lasted from 10 seconds to a few minutes. Many residents called the police to report the sound. However, the police had no explanation for it and eventually asked residents to stop making calls about the noise as it did not pose a safety hazard and they could not do anything about it. There were a number of theories about the mysterious sound. Some people linked it to the sewer system. However, city authorities denied that it was coming from the city sewers. There were also claims that the sound was made by the gas pressure in nearby gas plants. But the gas company also denied that it was being made by their plant. Eventually, residents of the city started proposing some unconventional sources for the sounds. These included frogs, aliens, and Bigfoot. Everyone seemed to have a theory about the sound, but no one had any evidence. Even the authorities were clueless. The mysterious sounds were heard for a few days and then they were never heard again. To this day, the residents of Forest Grove wonder what the cause of these sounds were. Utsurubune is a page on Wikipedia that tells about the mysterious object known as Utsurubune or Eurobune. According to the information provided in the Wikipedia article, Utsuru Bune refers to an incident when in 1803, an attractive young woman arrived on the coast of Japan in an unusual technologically advanced boat. The local fishermen tried to investigate her, but she could not communicate in Japanese. They took her back to the sea and let her go in her boat. According to some local legends, the woman was someone from the third kind. Some legends about Asalubun also tell of a mysterious box that the woman held in her hands when she came ashore. The Wikipedia page about Asalubun gives three different historical references about the legend. All three references are from the early 1800s, giving different but somewhat similar accounts of the incident. The Wikipedia page also mentions a number of investigations on the incident mentioned in the legends of Atsurobun. All the investigations drift towards different results. One of the recent investigations was conducted by Dr. Kazeo Tanaka from Gifu University of Tokyo. According to him, the legends of Itsuro Bune don't give any details about the movement of the boat or any extraordinary technologies of the boat. They simply mention it drifting motionlessly on the water. Dr. Kazal Tanak concluded that the series of tales of Atsurubun were probably a mixture of imagination and folk. Russian geoglyph in 2011, a Russian geologist, Alexander Shestikov, discovered a large geoglyph on the slopes of Zurekal Mountains in the Chelyabinsk region of Russia. The geoglyph looks like a depiction of a moose or an elk-like animal. It has a long snout, two antlers, and four legs. The geoglyph was first observed through satellite imagery. After a while, the researchers surveyed the outline of the geoglyph using a seaplane and a glider. After years of excavation work and archaeological studies, researchers believe that this could be the oldest geoglyph ever discovered. It is believed that the geoglyph was made sometime between 400 and 2000 BCE. During the excavations, geologists unearthed stones laying 4.5 meters. The borders of the geoglyph consists of large stones and there are small stones at the center. The creators of the geoglyph dug a trench and placed the stones in the trench. The geoglyph is about 195 meters wide, has a length of 715 meters and a diagonal of about 275 meters. Researchers believe that the figure was easily visible from a nearby ridge and it had a white shiny appearance against the green grassy background. Researchers have also discovered 40 stone tools during the excavation work. These stone tools are made of quartiles. Most of them are mattox which are similar to pickaxes and are used for chopping and digging. It is believed that the giant Russian geoglyph was built by a megalithic culture that inhabited the area.
Many stone monuments were also created by this culture during prehistoric times. Geologists are carrying out further research to find out more about the mysterious geoglyph and why it was created. Orang Medan in June 1947 A Dutch ship named Orang Medan was sailing along the Straits of Malacca when it sent out a shocking signal indicating that the captain and the entire crew of the ship were dead. After the first message, a number of random Morse code sequences were received that could not be deciphered. The last message was translated into two simple but shocking words. I die. The grim SOS message of the Orang Medan was picked up by Dutch and British listening posts situated near Malaysia and Sumatra. The listening posts worked together to find the location of Orang Medan and alerted nearby ships. Silver Star, which was an American merchant ship, reached Orang Medan only to find the vessel in nearly perfect condition. Silver Star's crew members shouted at the Orang Medan, but they did not get any response. Finally, after shouting and waving for a long time, a search and rescue team was sent. When the team stepped on the Orang Medan's deck, what they saw was something only to be seen in nightmares. The entire crew of the Orang Medan was lying dead. Their eyes were wide open with fear. Their mouths were wide open as if they were screaming when they died and their arms were spread wide as if they were trying to stop someone. The captain of the ship was also found in the exact same position. All the crew members were present on their designated places and rooms in the ship, but they were all dead and their faces had that identical horrific expression. As the crew members of the American ship were exploring the Arung Medan, it started sinking and the rescuers had to leave the ship along with its dead bodies in order to save their own lives. Some reports claim that the Arung Medan exploded after a while due to the explosives placed on the ship. Regardless, the unlucky ship sank to the bottom of the ocean along with the remains of its captain and the crew members. What happened on the Arung Medan remains one of the biggest oceanic mysteries. Some researchers have claimed that the crew members died due to a release of carbon monoxide onto the ship, while other theories hold pirates responsible for the horrific tragedy. Unfortunately, there is no record or evidence that could support either theory. The Great Sheep Panic of 1888 The phenomenon was not confined to one specific farm. It was observed across the entire area of Oxfordshire. The unique event took place during the night when something triggered what has been termed as the Great Sheep Panic of 1888. The next day, thousands of sheep were found widely scattered over an area of more than 520 square kilometers. Many of the sheep seemed frightened and were found in groups under the hedges at the corners of the fields. According to the Times, there was no possibility of humans being responsible for this massive sheep panic as it would have taken a coordinated effort by more than 1,000 men to trigger such a large sheep panic. It was reported in a scientific journal that the night of the 3rd of November 1888 was an extraordinarily dark night. There were some reports of lightning in the area and occasionally bright flashes were observed in the sky. Sheep panics are not a rare phenomenon. However, such simultaneous widespread sheep panic across such a large area is unheard of. There are a number of theories as to what caused this massive sheep panic of 1888. Some people believe that it was a result of some astronomical event in the sky that triggered the senses of sheep, and some people link the sheep panic with the lightning. It has been believed for many years that animals are able to sense or see different paranormal entities. Therefore, another popular theory about the 1888 sheep panic links the event to a possible encounter with a paranormal entity. Some people believe that perhaps it was an angel that visited the earth on the insanely dark night of November 3, 1888, triggering the sheep panic. Others have linked it to the devil or some other demonic entity. The fact that the locals of Oxfordshire did not report hearing anything strange on the night makes the sheep panic quite unexplainable. Storms are a common occurrence on our planet. During some of these events, though, they've unearthed some interesting discoveries. One photograph that's currently being shared is this one. It shows a huge ancient road that was allegedly lifted by a storm in the Pacific Ocean. The poster said that many residents living close to Sakhalin Island, a Russian island in the Pacific Ocean, claim that after the storm, the large roadway appeared. 
Residents reported that they were able to walk out onto it, but said that the event didn't last long, and the road sank back into the ocean. The island is known to have harsh storms, and in the past fishermen and locals have even passed away due to how strong they were. Except for a few eyewitness testimonies, not much information can be found out about the event. Online users said that although it sounds unlikely that a man-made road is lying just beneath the waves, it's entirely possible. After all, various ancient civilizations have been lost to the waves, including that of the mysterious pyramids of Yanaguni, also known as the Japanese Atlantis. One of the divers said the following after investigating the area. The larger structure looks like a complicated monolithic step pyramid. Rises from a depth of 25 meters or 82 feet, so there's definitely no shortage of these mysterious underwater structures. Some have suggested that this road isn't man-made and was likely just a piece of rock that got dislodged by the storm. Others, though, can't explain how a giant road somehow floated to this earth is even allowing people to walk on it. From the reports, the road was allegedly sturdy enough to allow dozens of people to walk up and down it. Some did note, though, that the heir of Sacklin Arland is no stranger to these sorts of mysteries, saying that there's various stories of underwater cities and megaliths, and that in the past even mysterious creatures have allegedly washed up on the shores. All of these stories add to the mystery of the area. As quickly as the road appeared, though, it soon sank into the ocean, leaving those in and around the area to wonder what it was, and if it will ever rise again. One of the last unexplored frontiers of our planet is not that of the endless deserts or impassable mountains, but rather that of our oceans. Every year scientists and researchers discover thousands of new species, new archaeological sites that were lost to the devs, and hidden caves that are home to an entire ecosystem. It's for this reason that the oceans of our planet are some of the most fascinating places to explore. During an investigation back in 2007, as archaeologists were scanning the waters of Lake Michigan in the hopes of locating old recorded shipwrecks, they found a number of strange structures that began to take form on their sonar imaging. At first, the structures appeared to be nothing more than a large number of rocks and boulders and peculiar spots, only to be later revealed to the archaeologists as massive megalithic carved rocks, featured a number of prehistoric markings on their surface. Additionally, the researchers discovered a grouping of these megalithic stones that seemed similar in design to that of Stonehenge, adding further proof that the large rocks had been artificially placed. When divers went down to gather more information, they found the rocks had a large number of strange detailed images that appear to be carvings of ancient and extinct mastodons. And these were all across the surfaces of the megalithic structures. Unfortunately, further information could not be gathered as the archaeological experts were not able to reach the appropriate depths necessary. And the experts remarked that they do not dive, and said they're not skilled enough to gather appropriate information and reliable data. Due to this and the large size of the megalithic structures, preventing the stones from being moved with ease, it appears that not only is it impossible for the researchers to study the strange rocks, but that any further information won't come forward until either a massive funding project is put into the investigation, or an archaeological expert becomes a master free diver. It's not just man-made structures that have been discovered. Researchers working in marine biology have begun to see what can only be described as a mass whale evolution across the planet. Seems to deny all expected research. Whales are a massive part of the ocean's ecosystem, surviving off plankton and other microorganisms that make up their large body size. And when they pass away, they serve as a significant amount of food resources for smaller marine life to decompose and thrive on. Because of their importance on the ocean's ecosystems, whales have been a closely studied marine animal. Better understand the secrets surrounding their evolution, history, and impact on the marine world. But for reasons not entirely certain, many researchers have begun to notice that the average whale song has begun to decrease in frequency. Due to their environment, Whales have naturally evolved a form of communication that uses different frequencies, and these are able to travel vast distances underwater. It's this communication system that researchers have said is changing, 
with whales of all species suddenly speaking at a much lower frequency. As published in the Journal of the Acoustical Society of America, the frequency of the Sri Lankan pygmy blue whale decreased from approximately 107 Hz to 100 Hz. This was over a decade. To date, this is the largest rate of decrease observed for any blue whale call. This new information has led to a few theories by researchers to explain the sudden frequency changes. Some have theorized that the noise of large-scale boats has dramatically risen, forcing whales deeper into the ocean and requiring them to speak lower frequencies to be heard over the background noises. Other researchers believe this change could be mostly due in part to decreased whaling. Regardless of what the cause may be, Researchers are unanimous in that the changes in frequency shows evidence of a dramatic whale evolution. There will definitely need to be research more heavily to better understand its effects on the whale population and what it could mean for their communication. So what do you make of these interesting discoveries? And what do you make of the ancient road that allegedly appeared after a large storm? Yangshan steel material quarry located in Nanjing in the country of China there lies an ancient stone quarry that has been a work site for ancient Chinese dynasties for more than three centuries and spanning more than six dynasties dating as far back as 200 AD. Unfortunately, exactly how the quarry was mined and made with such tremendous effort roughly 2000 years ago is unknown as back in 1368 AD. The Hongwu Emperor would reopen the quarry location and use the quarry for the construction of his kingdom that would continue up past the early 1400s. Due to these later techniques in stone quarrying, archaeologists have had a hard time recreating what original techniques were used. Despite these more recent cuts, the size, quality, and techniques used by ancient people were thought to rival any other building project of ancient times and the site to this day inspires a strange sense of awe and wonder as to its construction. Today, no quarrying of the site is allowed as it has been declared to be a culturally historic and significant site that is no longer to be fully disturbed and is actively protected against degradation after the signing of the Provincial Register of Protected Cultural Monuments back in 1956. Stone Balls Over the years, there have been many strange ocean discoveries. The oceans cover a vast amount of the planet. Scientists believe it's more than 71%. A massive 97% of the Earth's water can be found in our oceans. So it's no surprise that strange things have been discovered. One such discovery is that of strange stones. They can be found scattered everywhere along the these are clusters of metal lumps and they were discovered by a German research ship. Just a couple of hundred miles east of Barbados, the mesh net captured these metal balls instead of usual marine life. Manganese balls have been found in every single ocean, but they are most commonly found in the Pacific Ocean. Some of the largest balls that have been found could be up to 10 million years old. Scientists believe that the nodules grow extremely slowly, approximately one centimeter in one million years. We still have no idea where these manganese balls originated from, but we hope they could provide us with a record of past climate changes. Diten Rock, one of the most interesting discoveries in North America surrounding an isolated forest nearby the city of Diten. Massachusetts is that of a large boulder described as being 5 feet tall, 10 feet wide, and 11 feet long, featuring a number of strange petroglyph markings that few have been able to decipher into a readable text. This boulder, known as Diten Rock, weighs more than 40 tons and was originally located at the side of near Berkeley in the state of Massachusetts. The first mention of Dyson Rock dates back as far as 1680 when a man by the name of John Danforth, a resident of a newly formed English colony in the region, would make a copy of the images of the rock and have them preserved and sent back to the British Museum for examination. Despite a number of experts from around the world journeying to the British Museum to make attacks at understanding the old markings, no legitimate translations would surface forcing experts to believe that the position of the rock alongside the riverbed would hold a number of contextual clues for researchers to better understand the strange petroglyphs. In an attempt to piece together the mystery and look at the surrounding area for context, it became obvious to researcher Edmund B. Delabar that the rock was not the creation of any nearby Native American settlements. A better explanation for the creation of the markings on the rock would soon surface thereafter. 
when documents surrounding the expedition of Miguel Cot Ariel would surface. When analyzing the rock more closely, Edmund de la Barre noticed what looked like Latin characters in some areas of the petroglyphs, whereas other markings looked like landmarks and attempted images of surrounding regions. This led him to believe that the rock was a written record of a traveler in the region as not of any of the Native American tribes nearby. When Edmund finally translated the Latin text, he found that the words when translated into English read I Miguel Corte Real 1511. In this place, by the God of Will, I became chief of the Indians. This translation would help to prove Edmund's theories surrounding his travel acclaims and believed that the rock was evidence of a famed Portuguese explorer Having reached New England during the early, the entire rock would be moved from its original resting place and any other artifacts in the region would become destroyed after the residents of the region constructed the cofferdam and flooded the area holding any potential hidden artifacts to provide additional context to the rock's placement and history. This would prevent any further evidence surrounding the creation of the rock or any nearby inhabitants leaving the context and the history of the rock a complete mystery outside of these small translatable inscriptions. Hidden ancient city discovering the ruins of an ancient city, surrounded by the sprawling plant life of a jungle, is a fantasy that many of us had in our youth. There's still something about uncovering the remnant of ancient civilizations that just gets the blood pumping. Many ancient ruins may still be out there waiting to be discovered. Since new technologies are allowing scientists more and more ways to find what was previously the possible outcomes for future ruin discoveries are looking more and more positive. One amazing example is the network of Mayan ruins discovered in 2018. The Mayan people have been seen as a cornerstone of human civilization, with a deep and complex understanding of architecture, culture, and religious practices that still amazes historians today. Yet, nobody was expecting the extent of the discovery made in 2018, when over 60,000 Mayan ruins were uncovered in Guatemala. While archaeologists had already spent years mapping out the region known as El Sats, the development of LIDAR technology allowed researchers to create a detailed map of the area's surface from above, much faster than before. To give an idea of how dense the jungle is in this area, one archaeologist stated that one of the finds was within 150 feet, but due to thick vegetation they had never spotted it. The LIDAR technology shaved years off of the team's overall workload, and it has uncovered an unbelievable amount of previously unknown Mayan ruins, including walls, moats, roadways, and fortresses. Some of the most interesting finds from the discovery include a seven-story pyramid that was completely hidden by foliage, as well as an intricate network of raised highways that connected all of the Mayan cities in the local area. These networks are particularly fascinating as they show signs of heavy use, indicating that trade between cities was frequent. Stephen Houston, a professor of archaeology and anthropology at Brown University, stated this discovery is one of the greatest advances in over 150 years of Mayan archaeology. LiDAR imagery is a new tool that spots archaeological points of interest that would otherwise be invisible to us humans. Using remote sensing technology, LiDAR uses beams of lasers pointed at the ground to create an image map of the area's surface. The beams then bounce back and the wavelengths are measured, giving an accurate picture of what lies below. The find in Guatemala has made historians completely rethink what they thought of the Mayan people. Observing the thousands upon thousands of ruins, it could be possible that the civilization population was three to four times bigger than we once believed. Mr. Estrada Belli said, with this new data, it's no longer unreasonable to think that there were 10 to 15 million people there, including many living in low-lying, swampy areas that many of us had thought uninhabitable. One caveat to this discovery is that while the find is a phenomenal discovery, researchers have their work cut out for them as the Elzat site is likely to house more than 3,000 years of Mayan civilization. This means that lots of the finds may be from completely different periods in Mayan history, and it'll take a long time to accurately study and catalog each and every one of them. Still, it goes to show that there could be an untold number of things waiting to be discovered in our planet's jungles. Aztec Sunstone The Aztec Sunstone is a mysterious circular stone that was discovered in 1790 in the central plaza of Mexico City. 
The stone depicts the five consecutive worlds of sun, as per the Aztec mythology. According to historians, this elaborately carved solar disk represented rulership for the Aztecs and some other Mesoamerican cultures. The top of the stone contains a date glyph that represents the beginning of the fifth and final sun, and the date 1427 CE. This legitimizes its cutlass rule and creates a bond between mankind and the gods. The basalt stone has a diameter of 3.58 meters and has a thickness of 98 centimeters. It weighs around 25 tons. This stone was once a part of Temple Mayer's architectural complex and the center of the stone has a representation of an Aztec god. The tongue of the figure is sticking out and probably represents a sacrificial knife suggesting the thirst for sacrifice and blood. Historians believe that this stone was originally laid on ground and it was smeared with blood sacrifices. At the time of its discovery, the Aztec sunstone was found laying flat and upside down. Some historians believe that it was left in that position in an effort to prevent the alleged final cataclysm, which was the fall of the final sun. Within the last few years, SpaceX has become one of the leaders in space exploration. The most recent news was that the company was picked by NASA to build the human lunar lander. This was an honor as it would have been the first lunar lander since the Apollo program. However, it's just been announced that NASA has suspended work on the almost $3 billion lander. A NASA spokeswoman said the following. Pursuant to the GAO protests, NASA instructed SpaceX that progress on the contract has been suspended until GAO resolves all outstanding litigation related to this procurement. SpaceX, though, has a busy year ahead of them in terms of launches and are still working on the human Mars mission. Elon said the following, and that's what being a spacefaring civilization is all about. It's about believing in the future and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. End quote. Right now, though, there's a group of people that are asking Elon to go to the moon and investigate a mysterious anomaly, saying that whatever this thing is, it needs to be investigated as it looks like a giant ship. The individual who found this craft is Scott C. Waring, a vocal UFO researcher who's claimed he's found various UFOs and ships in space. Although NASA have replied to some of these claims and debunked them as camera anomalies and other occurrences that happen in space. Regardless, Mr. Waring believes this large craft is the real deal, and even said the first space company to reach this could potentially uncover advanced tech. He said the following about the discovery. When looking over the Apollo 15 panoramic images, I came across a photo that has a mothership in it. It's not a cloud. Clouds do not exist on the moon. So I enlarged the photo and saw that not only was it a ship, it looked very similar to the Starship Voyager from Star Trek. End quote. It goes on to claim that the ship in question measures over 10.6 kilometers, or 6.5 miles. Amateur researchers have come forward in recent years and claim they found similar looking objects in old photographs. And they say this proves that there's more going on than what we're being told about. And in some cases, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration is even editing out these images, in the hopes that we won't see them. Amateur researchers say they do this because they think the majority of the population found out about these things they would just panic. Recently, he along with other researchers have asked Elon to consider checking out the location, saying that this could be the discovery of a lifetime and could help us to answer the old age question of whether we're truly alone in the universe. This isn't the first time that someone has asked this from Elon. With all of the recent SpaceX launches, some watchers have claimed they've seen UFOs close to the rockets, saying that whatever these things are, they're clearly interested in our tank. As every time we send a rocket into space, these unidentified flying objects can be seen buzzing their crafts. However, these people may be preaching to the wrong person. As in the past, Elon has been quite vocal about the fact that he's never seen any evidence to suggest that UFOs are genuine. He did say it's likely that consciousness might exist in the vastness of space, but also said if there were UFOs out there, he would know about them. Going on to say the following, I've seen nothing to indicate there are any alien civilizations whatsoever. I'd be the first to jump on that in a second, but I've seen no such evidence. End quote. 
He also went on to criticize UFO photographs, saying that the majority of them are blurry and you can't make out what the object is. Some people hit back at this though and said that the majority of eyewitnesses aren't expecting to see them, which causes the photos to be blurry. Also, as mentioned by photographers and eyewitnesses, They've said that it's incredibly hard to take a photograph of a UFO on an everyday smartphone, saying that they're not designed to take photographs of fast-moving objects hundreds of feet in the sky. Believers have said it's one of the most frustrating things that people say when talking about UFOs, as until what happens to you don't understand how hard it is to photograph a UFO. For years now, UFO researchers have said the moon is a hot spot for UFOs, even going as far as saying it's one of the best places to see mysterious crafts. This has led to amateur researchers coming through NASA's huge library in the hopes of finding something of interest. One photograph that did stump NASA was this one. It's been called the break-off, and it shows what looks like a large object hovering close to the moon. Some have said it could be a chunk of the moon that came off, but UFO believers have said it looks like an unidentified flying object. Oddly enough, in the next photo that was taken by the space agency, the object can no longer be seen. The photograph is still in NASA's archives, and various newspapers reached out to the space agency in the hopes of getting an answer for what this object is. NASA spokeswoman Lynette Madison said that people are too quick to label things as UFOs, but said that the photograph is strange, and that as of right now they can't explain what it is. So what do you make of this object on the moon? Do you think it's a UFO? Or is it something mundane such as a shadow on the moon? Also, what do you make of Elon's comments about UFOs? Canuck Pigman, one of the most popular stories surrounding strange sightings at Canuck Chase, seems to center around a cryptid creature unlike anything that has ever been seen before in the world of cryptozoology. This creature appears to be a human-animal hybrid that seemingly popped out of nowhere and disappeared into memory. Known as the Canuck Chase Pigman, there exists a creature that has been described as possessing the body of a large man, the face of a pig, and has been occasionally seen dressed in scavenged human clothes when spotted in the dense and remote forest regions of Canachase. Legends and sightings of the creature began shortly after the end of World War II with many claiming to have seen the pigmen across a span of more than 50 years before the last sighting would take place somewhere around 1993. When a man by the name of Lee Brickley would publish a book centered around the decades of reports spanning across the five decades of the pigmen sightings. Despite the hundreds of reports, witness sightings appeared to be largely consistent with the description of the creature, with consistent claims that the creature stood at roughly seven feet tall, looked like a man from the neck down and had a mutated face with an elongated snout. Some claimed to hear it squeal or run on all fours with the strange ability to sniff out anything and anyone nearby. Local legends surrounding the pigmen claim that the creature was made via gene-splicing efforts that the government attempted shortly after the Second World War only for the creature to be released into the wild when all attempts at taming the creature would not work. Although there is no truth or evidence to these legends outside of witness reports, the story of the Canuck Chase Pigman continues on all the same. Old House Woods are cursed. The coastal town of Diggs is located in Virginia and attracts many due to its scenic coastal views. Others, however, are drawn to the town due to the 50-acre patch of dense pine woods and marshland if you travel down Haven Beach Road. These woods are allegedly one of the most haunted woods in the world. Their very name, Old House Woods, is a reference to a spooky event. An old house once stood in the center of the forest and was suspected of being haunted by ghosts. This was until the house set on fire one night with no explanation as to where or how the fire was started. Even more strangely, the fire was suddenly extinguished with no explanation, only to alight once again and burn to the ground a few years later. At one point, the forest had been a popular port of soldiers and pirates before and during the American Revolutionary War. The dense landscape served as the perfect hiding spot. However, this also meant that the area quickly earned a reputation for being dangerous, leaving travelers vulnerable to murder and thievery. Since then, the wood has become renowned for being home to a number of ghostly apparitions that range from soldiers and ship crews all the way to phantom animals. Henry Forrest described how once when out hunting ducks in the woods, 
he witnessed a group of objects he assumed were ducks passing through the water. As they approached, the objects began to morph into the redcoat revolutionary soldiers who began to march towards him. When Forrest tried to retreat to his boat, he found one of the soldiers was on board. When he threatened to shoot the soldier, it calmly replied that if he dared shoot, Forrest would have the devil's curse placed on him. When Forrest did try and shoot, he found his gun no longer worked. He was forced to flee for his life. Described how when out fishing in the woods, he saw a large wooden vessel approach him whose boards were crowded with crew members. Others have even described witnessing skeletons dressed in armor, carrying lanterns and brandishing archaic swords. Many believe these soldiers and ship crews are all searching for the multiple mounds of treasure that are reportedly hidden in the woods. It is said that an unrecovered stash of gold coins was buried in the woods by pirates in the 1600s. Alongside some expensive loot from a treasure-laden ship sent to America from England in 1651 that was attacked by bandits. However, not all ghostly human apparitions are military in nature. One of the most famous sightings in the woods is the ghostly figure of a woman dressed in a white gown with a green glow emanating from her. On calm nights, she is said to walk among the trees and let out unearthly screams that has led her to her nickname as the Storm. The ghosts are not always human. Two black dogs have been known to jump out of paths while there have also been sightings of black horses, crows, and headless cows. Alongside ghostly sightings, those who visit the woods have often returned telling tales of strange occurrences. Travelers' horses would often fly into a panic while trotting through the woods, while humans have described struggling to catch their breath and choking or being filled with a sense of dread and imminent doom. It looks like inanimate objects are also victim to the woods. Cameras have malfunctioned, full batteries have suddenly gone dead, and recordings have no working sound when played back. While one or two spooky accounts can be dismissed easily by skeptics, the sheer number of ghostly sightings and unexplained events that have taken place in the old house woods have cemented its status as one of the most haunted places in America. Fiskerton Phantom The Fiskerton Phantom is a mysterious phantom cat-like creature that has been sighted near Fiskerton in Lincolnshire. The first sighting of the creature was reported on August 27, 1997 when four young girls reported seeing four feet tall bear-like huge creatures eating a pheasant. Upon seeing the terrifying black-colored creature, the girls immediately fled to the nearby Triwit Arms pub, what they had just witnessed. When they later returned to the site, they found large paw prints on the ground. Another alleged sighting of the Fiskerton Phantom was reported by Dave Brumhead, the owner of the Tywood Arms pub. According to him, a motorist had also claimed to have seen the Phantom at the same location where the girls had seen it. During 1997, several other sightings of a large phantom-like creature were also reported. The alleged sightings of the creature continued until 2011. There are a number of theories about the Fiskerton Phantom. According to experts, bears became extinct in the British Isles about a thousand years ago and there are no other animals large enough that fit the description of the phantom. Some people believe that it could be a lion, some other large cat, or a bear that had escaped from a public or private zoo. Others believe that it could be a paranormal creature appearing in the form of a large phantom. However, there isn't much evidence to support any of these theories. Although there haven't been any recent sightings of the Fiskerton phantom, Many of the locals believe that a mysterious beast still roams the streets of Fiskerton at night. Black Stick Men Cryptids One of the most peculiar reports surrounding paranormal activity located in forests all across North America appears to be that of a paranormal phenomenon known as the Black Stick Men Cryptids. By all regards, the Black Stick Men are an extremely recent phenomenon with the first known report having been written roughly a little over a year ago during 2018 and no hint of such creatures having existed at any point in time prior to these first reports. The first well-documented report of the Black Stick Men cryptid came from cryptozoologist Mark Wolfgang Miller, of whom claimed that he had encountered the strange creature during an expedition around the small town of Beaufort, Wyoming. There he claimed that he and his team came within six feet of a Black Stick Man that towered above them in the forest and would have been completely invisible had it not turned to face them. 
According to eyewitness reports, the black stick men are a paranormal or supernatural cryptid that appears to stand at 7 feet to 12 feet tall, is completely void of color or light, and is typically described similar to that of a silhouette or shadow. These cryptids are so thin that the creature is widely claimed to be only two-dimensional in shape and, when turned sideways, is impossible to see by any eyewitness account. It is this two-dimensionality that allows the black stick men cryptids to sneak up on the eyewitnesses in their stories and suddenly appear in front of them after turning to face them. Black stick men are not similar to reports of shadow people in mostly three separate regards. Unlike claims of shadow people, the black stick men are widely regarded as being two-dimensional, whereas shadow people have three-dimensional shapes. Additionally, those of whom have claimed to have witnessed the black stick men will often say that they feel a sudden oppressive negative energy fill the air causes a strange feeling of aggression and agitation in those surrounding or looking at the cryptid. Several theories of the creatures so far believe the cryptid to be an interdimensional being only recently having accessed our three-dimensional plane. Counters with the Dover Demon First spotted back on the 21st of April in 1977 within the town of Dover, Massachusetts, was that of an alien-like creature that many residents have come to now know as the Dover Demon. The most remarkable fact surrounding the sighting of the creature is that, over the course of one night, there were three other independent sightings of the creature, with each sighting landing on a perfect straight line of each other. The first sighting occurred in the evening of April 21st when a teenage boy named William Bartlett, only 17 years old, was driving down Farm Street in the town of Dover. His witness report claimed that the creature walked on all fours, had tendril-like fingers, large glowing eyes, and had been walking atop a stone wall with perfect balance. The second sighting occurred only a few hours later in which a boy by the name of John Baxter, only 15 years claimed to have been seen by a creature fitting the same description traveling nearby the Miller Hill Road. The third and final sighting of the Dover Demon occurred the next morning on the 22nd of April when a young teenage girl named Abby Brabham, also only 15 years old, claimed to have been passing by Springdale Avenue and encountered the creature traveling in a straight line following the direction away from the previous sightings. When the they form a straight line, leading many to believe that the creature was traveling to a specific location or away from something that it had encountered. The travel distance between all three points was noted as being two miles in total distance. Despite each teenager having gone to police to report their findings, the police quickly dismissed the case and claimed that what had probably been seen was nothing more than a moose calf. To this day, the three still claim what they encountered was some sort of a monster, but and nothing native to our planet Earth. Between the years of 1998 and 2020, countless people have gone missing. The sad thing is that many of these cases remain unsolved. One of the most recent reports detailed the disappearance of a woman named Watiba, and she lived on Munar Island. After being reported missing, her sister decided to search the air in the hopes of finding her. She came across her sister's shoes and noticed some footprints that led into the nearby forest. She said that her sister had been worried about the local boar as they sometimes go for people and said that at the time of her disappearance she was checking up on her crumbs. After reporting her sister missing, over 100 locals joined the search, which allowed them to cover more ground. It was during this search that a chilling discovery was made. Around half a mile from our home, one of the locals found a reticulated python, and it was very swollen. The group took the snake back to their village, and once they opened it up, they found the woman inside. Unfortunately, she had passed away. The reticulated python is found throughout Asia and holds the record as being the largest snake in the world. The average size is between 4 and 7 meters. Although according to the Natural History Museum, the longest reticulated python ever recorded was found in 1912 and measured 10 meters or 32 feet. There have been a few reported cases of these snakes going for humans, although wildlife experts have said they will normally go for much smaller animals. Experts though said it's important to keep in mind that reticulated pythons rarely go for humans. Has only been a half or f cases where this has happened, but noted that if the snakes are hungry and a human happens to be close by it will attack. The reticulated pythons are constrictors, 
meaning they take out their prey by squeezing them. Professor Harry Green said the following, It would be extremely difficult for me to save my life without help. It wouldn't take very long and it would be awful. End quote. Pythons are some of the most powerful snakes on the planet. They are non-venomous, meaning that the only way they can take out their prey is by squeezing their life out of them. Interestingly, wildlife researchers have said this method only works on warm-blooded animals, with them saying that when observed in the past, this method has little to no effects on cold-blooded animals. According to National Geographic, a bar constrictor was observed squeezing an iguana for over an hour. After this, the snake held on to it, but those observing the event said that after the ordeal, the iguana just ran off. A similar event made headlines when a local farmer in Indonesia was swallowed by a reticulated python. This one measured over 20 feet. Dr. Green said it was a rare occurrence, but noted that there are cases where this has happened. Indonesia is one of the places where it happens the most. Farmers are going about their business and sometimes don't realize that a python is nearby. Pythons will also go for things like monkeys and even orangutans. Villagers said the farmer was taken out from behind, with wildlife experts saying in this case he was likely stalked by the snake. The majority of snake bites come from self-defense. But these snakes have also been observed waiting close to trails. Dr. Green said that within a few seconds these snakes could wrap their entire body around you. The majority of people who are attacked by these snakes survive though. In fact, out of 60 locals that were interviewed, over 20 of them had said they come into contact with a reticulated python, with many of them having scars from their encounter. A recent mystery from Indonesia is that of the sinking of a submarine. The submarine had lost contact after it submerged, and this caused teams on the ground to carry out an investigation. At first, there were hopes that the crew of 53 could be alive, as when the submarine disappeared, Navy officials said they had 72 hours worth of oxygen. However, this quickly dwindled. Navy Chief Yudo Magano said that several items have been found in deep waters, going on to say the following. With the authentic evidence we found believed to be from the submarine, we have now moved from the submiss phase to subsunk. If it's an explosion, it will be in pieces. The cracks happen gradually in some parts, where it went down from 300 meters to 400 meters, to then 500 meters. If there was an explosion, it would be heard by the sonar. The submarine is found at a depth that's far beyond the crush depth of the boat. There will be no survivors, assuming that none of those on board managed to escape before it fell below the crush depth. Colin Coe, a researcher in the area, said the following. The evacuation they're talking about, I surmise they're referring likely to the eventual retrieval of the debris. Whatever is left of the submarine that can be salvaged with the hopes of at least retrieving the remains of the crew and quote as of right now, one leading theory for what happened was that a strong natural force dragged the submarine into deeper waters officials have backed this idea and said the sub was likely hit by a solitary wave. These waves are hard to detect and are major threat to things like submarines officials have said they're working to salvage the submarine, but said it's going to be tough as it's cracked into three pieces. The Navy said it's waiting for backup from two ships that deal in deep-sea salvage operations. Navy Chief Udo Morgano said the following, It's hard to talk about specific timing, but I can say that as soon as help arrives, we'll start. The Navy said the submarine may have experienced a blackout. This stopped the team from being able to carry out operations. What do you make of these stories? In recent years, Barbados has been the home of many mysteries. Barbados is around 120 miles from St. Vincent, but the island is getting hit by some of the debris of the volcano. The volcano, which is located in St. Vincent, erupted last week. It's been dormant for over 42 years, and not only is it affecting St. Vincent, but also the neighboring islands. Researchers have said that Barbados has been hit quite badly and that things like travel could be restricted. Officials have also said that more eruptions are likely, and that residents need to stay inside the green zones for their safety. During all of this, though, one of the last things you'd expect to come from this event is that of UFO sightings. Yet a few reports have come from the island, 
in which residents have detailed seeing odd crafts in the sky. Delilah, one of the local residents, said the following, Although a lot of people are busy with everything that's going on, some of us have noticed strange things in the sky. There's crafts that zipping around above us. These things are fast. I've never seen anything like them before, and I'm not sure what to compare them to. They are much faster than planes and seem to be interested in the volcano. End quote. Although not much came from this report, this person wasn't the only one who'd seen these crafts. Others backed this up and said that neighboring islands also experienced an influx in sightings. Interestingly, amateur researchers who've studied UFOs have said this is nothing new and that these crafts seem to be interested in things like natural disasters. In fact, one place where mysterious crafts are often seen is that of Mexico. Pavo Catepetl is an active strata volcano and its name translates to Smoky Mountain. This is fitting as the volcano is quite active. However, over the years it's been making the news for a different reason. Various webcams are pointed at the volcano, which gives users a good view of it from the safety of their home. But it's not just ash, plumes, and clouds that have been witnessed at the volcano. Many people have come forward and said they've witnessed unidentified flying objects. These aren't just stories either. People have managed to take photographs and screenshots of the objects while above the volcano. The most commonly shaped objects that are seen are the disc and cigar. However, various other shapes have been seen. This has caused UFO researchers to label this place as a UFO hotspot. Yearly, many of these objects get reported, and although some of them do eventually get explained, many of them remain a mystery. One of the most recent ones was captured on a webcam on the 20th of April in 2020. The object in question appears to be a glowing orb. These are often reported by people worldwide, and they are known for being difficult to photograph as they just appear as a glowing object. Mysterious-looking objects can be seen flying out of the volcano. Interestingly, this matches many other reports. Others have said these unidentified flying objects have been seen flying both in and out of the volcano. This begs the question why these objects are so interested in this volcano. No other volcano on our planet is as active as this one. In terms of having strange objects witnessed around it, UFO researchers have said that whenever our planet has a natural disaster like a tsunami or a volcanic eruption, mysterious crafts are usually reported in the sky by residents close to the area. It's not entirely understood why this is, but some researchers have said these events always seem to attract them. However, people disagree on what these things are. As with most UFO sightings, you have those that think these are unidentified flying objects, while others have said they could be things like debris. In the case of the volcano in Mexico, though, residents have captured these things flying in and out of the volcano. Others have said these objects could be a natural phenomena like ball lightning. Ball lightning is the strange occurrence of when the conditions appear to be just right. And the static discharge of a normal thunderstorm creates what appears to be a floating ball of pure lightning. Not only do these strange unexplained instances of ball lightning create an unexplainable perfect spherical shape, but they also appear to move erratically through the sky and have often been mistaken as alien encounters. Some don't buy this theory, though, and have said these unidentified flying objects appear to be interested in mountains and various volcanoes across our planet. In the last 50 years, thousands of UFO sightings have been reported in and around volcanoes. One of the most recent videos shows what looks like a large cigar-shaped object flying into the volcano, with some viewers even saying that when it enters the volcano spits out some ash. What's odd is that residents have been reporting these sightings for years now. Some even claim this volcano is like a sort of portal and it seems to attract these crafts while others have reported they've seen things flying out only for them to fly away into the night sky at extreme speeds. These crafts come in different shapes and sizes with some of the most commonly reported ones being that of the disc, the orb of the triangle, and the cigar. So what do you guys make of these reports? And what do you make of these objects? Do you think they're just everyday things? Or do you think they're genuine? If so, why do you think they're so interested in natural disasters? Antarctica is a hostile place. A small team of people call this place home, 
living in government buildings that were placed there years ago. But every year, various mysterious discoveries are made in and around Antarctica, with one of the most recent ones being this one, that shows four large structures. One person who was looking through Google Earth said they were looking close to Antarctica and noticed four large objects that looked like islands. They said the following, I usually go on Google Earth and look around our planet. It's an incredible tool that lets you see incredible sights. The other day, though, I noticed these strange objects off the coast of Antarctica. I often look at Antarctica not for any particular reason, mainly because it interests me and I like to see if there's any geological changes. But I soon spotted these four island-like objects. These were close to the shore. The thing is I often look around this area and I haven't noticed these things before. I know Google Earth can sometimes show anomalies, but I have no idea what these things are. They looked huge and just reminded me of islands. End quote. Interestingly, this wasn't the first person to point out these strange structures. Other online viewers also noticed these strange objects close to Antarctica, and soon people started to give their opinions on what they thought the objects were. One person said the following, I have no idea what these are. Could they have been created by volcanic activity beneath the ocean? They look like phantom islands. End quote. While another person said the following, Antarctica and the area around it are home to many strange things. There's various pyramids that can be found close to Antarctica. In fact, recently, someone found a couple of pyramids a few hundred miles away from Antarctica. There's certainly no shortage of strange things going on there. End quote. While skeptics weren't impressed and said that what we're likely looking at is something like a glitch on Google Earth, saying that in the past similar things have been found. Others though pointed out that due to the very strange things that have been found close to Antarctica, we should at least investigate these things further. It's not just these floating objects that have confused people. On the surface of Antarctica, various different finds are being made, some of which appear to show large-looking structures. One of these was three large structures that appears to have a trail to the left. Immediately, theorists started to question what these things were. Some suggested that they might have been a secret outpost, while others said that due to the ice melting, is revealed some type of ancient monolith, one that could prove that ancient humans made it to Antarctica. As of right now, though, these are just theories, and it's tough to get a definitive answer for what these things are. Another interesting discovery that was made by scientists was that of a forest. It's believed by many different researchers from around the world that the continent of Antarctica was once inhabited with a lush green forest, saying that this would have surrounded the entire area. Evidence can be found of this when looking at a team of archaeologists and researchers that led an expedition in Antarctica in November of 2016. That lasted for several months, ending in January 2017. The team found incredible evidence of ancient forests in the region. This was after locating and identifying several different traces of fertile growing lands, areas of climate change in the past, as well as large amounts of fossil fragments from ancient trees that dated as far back as more than 260 million years ago. This timeline correlates with one very important event in the past, the Permian period, also known as the greatest mass extinction event in the history of the world. Before this event, there was much more carbon naturally in the atmosphere, which created lush green forests all around the world. This large amount of carbon allowed many creatures to thrive. It also meant that our planet was able to support larger forms of animal life. It's interesting then to consider this idea that roughly 260 million years ago, the continent of Antarctica would have been a densely populated lush green forest with a tremendous variation in wildlife and ecosystems. A professor at the University of Wisconsin, known as Dr. Gobranson, argues that the continent as a whole was much warmer, and even more humid than many areas in the modern day. In fact, it has overwhelming evidence that the area would have been closer in resemblance to the forests of Siberia. Additionally, at the rate of the burning fossil fuels, of which is reintroducing this carbon into the atmosphere that was lost during the Permian extinction, we will soon be reaching atmospheric conditions, once again of which will allow the continent of Antarctica to be a thriving forest. And this is said to happen within the next few hundred years. Shortly after the expedition that uncovered the fossils of ancient trees in the region, 
researchers were obsessed with uncovering proof of larger life throughout the area. Back in 2010, researchers used large-scale blasting to blow out layers of surface rock against the Antarctic mountainsides in an effort to uncover possible fossil layers buried deep beneath the glaciers. After several months of searching and mining for fossils, the research team uncovered exactly what they were looking for. It appeared that fossils of ancient dinosaurs inhabiting the region millions of years ago, roughly around the same time as the Permian extinction, were uncovered after going down past the layers of the glacial strait in the region. Bones of another strange creature have been uncovered that is believed to be that of a species of dinosaur. And this one's never been found by scientists. According to their reports, the paleontologists accompanying the research team discovered a density-packed grouping of fossils belonging to different types of dinosaurs. And these were of sauropods. Sauropod skulls are incredibly rare to find, as they weren't very delicate during the life of the creature and so a completely intact skull is rare to find in one complete fossilized piece. Luckily for the team, among the densely packed fossils were that of bones, ribs, vertebrae, arms, legs, and a complete skull. Many of these bones have already been rendered in 3D imaging that will help to preserve their finds for years to come. So what do you make of these discoveries? Atacama Raptor Sighting Back in 2004, a Spanish family visiting the Atacama Desert of Chile claimed to have seen a strange dog-like kangaroo creature, later dubbed the Atacama Raptor, that chased their vehicle as they made their way back to Arica. The Spanish family described the animal as appearing to stand at a little over six feet tall, sighted as running on its hind legs similar to a bipedal creature, possessing razor-sharp teeth and a sharp tongue and seemed to fit the description of a dinosaur-like bird closely resembling a large kangaroo. This has led many to support the idea that perhaps there is a direct descendant of an ancient raptor species that has survived well into the modern day. Though many researchers are scared to make such assumptions as the sighting and reports have been few and far between, and the natural environment of the Atacama Desert is hardly capable of supporting large natural wildlife. If there are surviving raptor species, Creature would be similar in design to the modern-day ostrich with its bipedal design and large bird-like body. Unfortunately, for a creature of that size to exist in the region, it would also need to possess a significantly large enough population to continue its numbers without any damage mutations in the species. It is for this reason that it is believed that the Atacama raptor must be an endangered species, hidden across Chile in uninhabited regions across the country. Given the fact that the sightings of the creature are few and far between, many believe that perhaps the unknown species is already extinct, if it ever existed in the first place. Does forensic science substantiate Bigfoot claims? Jeff Meldrum, professor of anatomy and anthropology at Idaho State University, believes it does. And who better to believe than an expert in the evolutionary morphology that is the study of how primates adapted to bipedalism? In his research, Meldrum studies footprints to determine how humans have evolved for upright walking. He studied samples from Hawaii and Africa as well as from places all around the world. Meldrum attributes his interest in Bigfoot to a track he discovered in southeastern Washington. It was here he says he found a fresh track. So fresh he could still see the skin ridge details. The print was at least 14 inches long. That first sighting was over 20 years ago. Since then Meldrum has studied over 300 footprint casts as well as hundreds of pictures of the alleged Bigfoot. When describing these casts, Meldrum said the feet are broader and flatter than any human. He also noted the lack of arch and thumb-like big toe that would be similar to an ape's. Instead, there was a big toe more like a human's. The toes were longer, presumably to help navigate the uneven terrain. Furthermore, Based on the imprint, Meldrum believed that the prints couldn't have been manufactured as some believed. The print is pressed into the ground in such a way that it shows flexibility in the foot. He noted that these prints are surely adapted to allow a large primate to walk on two legs. To Meldrum, this evidence is proof that Bigfoot may exist and it would be ridiculous to simply discount his existence. Meldrum doesn't simply believe in Bigfoot, he is certain he exists. Even skeptics applaud his work. 
Encounters with the Kraken born from Scandinavian folklore, the Kraken was an enormous cephalopod dwelling in the waters near Norway and Greenland. Early sightings of the creature go as far back as 1250 when an anonymous author described it in a Norwegian text. This narrator believed there to only be two kraken alive as they were spotted in two specific areas. In the text, the kraken is described as then like a fish. While this gives no specific measurement, it definitely reveals how people perceived the size of the creature. The work goes on to tell of a great mouth that would open and devour many fish before locking its jaw closed. Over the years, many tales of the creatures were told. Researchers believe that the tale started as a sighting of a giant sea squid. Some of these may even grow to be 40 to 50 feet in length. To see that looming beneath a boat would surely stir up superstition and fear among sailors of the time. The tales of the monster grew larger with each telling and soon the kraken was overtaking entire boats and swallowing up entire crews. There are few tales that stand out among the others. In 1873 near Newfoundland, it is said that two fishermen and a 12-year-old boy fought off the kraken with nothing more than an axe. When the kraken wrapped its tentacles around their small boat, the boy hacked off two of them. Later, in 1874, a 150-ton schooner was said to be the next victim. Witnesses from a nearby ship called the Strathowen reported seeing a kraken wrap its monstrous tentacles around the schooner called the Peril, also just south of Newfoundland. Although the crew of the Peril fought the creature, the ship was overtaken and dragged into the depths, leaving a cloud of ink in its wake. The Strathhowen moved in to rescue the crew that miraculously survived the attack. Are all of these just tall tales and folklore? Maybe. Science seems to prove the tales do stem from some fact, however. It is widely accepted that large squids do exist in the dark waters of our oceans. In fact, in July of 2012, the very first video of a giant squid had been captured. Although the video shows only a 30-foot squid, the largest one on record was a whopping 55 feet long. The Kraken is just one of the many myths spawned from the unknown. A giant squid sighting, oral folklore sparking fear in the hearts of sailors hundreds of years of embellishment. Although they are not swallowing up entire ships, it's safe to say enormous mysteries are swirling around in the dark corners of the unexplored oceans. Australian Bunyip Described as one of the strangest creatures in Aboriginal myth, the Bunyip of Australia seems to be a monster that borders more on the supernatural than on the natural or cryptozoological. Though many Aboriginal drawings will depict a panther-like creature as the Bunyip, the truth surrounding the bunyip is that the creature has no true physical form and has the ability to shapeshift into a creature of any kind. This has led many of the aboriginal people to telling stories of the bunyip taking strange forms such as that of a large flying starfish, a creature with large tusks and the face of a dog. A number of strange forms that seem to be an amalgamation of a number of creatures and even that of a large man. Its normal form is believed to be nothing more than a strange ball of light that leads many to believe that perhaps the creature is more of a manifested spirit with the ability to take physical forms of any kind. Additionally, the spirit is believed to live in the waters of Australia, usually having surfaced or exited from a body of water such as a river, lake, or shoreline. Though the majority of the information surrounding the bunyip is that gathered from stories and legends of the Aboriginal people, there has been also a number of reports from old British trade ships during the first days of inhabiting the Australian area, leading to a number of written reports surrounding the dangers of the creature and encounters from merchants and officers. This has led many to believe that perhaps there was some sort of violent creature that targeted ships or movement in the water, though researchers are uncertain what it could have been. Today, there are still reports on the Bonyard creature all throughout Australia leaving many to wonder that perhaps the creature is still residing in the waters in the modern era. Bringing back prehistoric creatures over the years, many different theories have been put forward to try and explain the demise of the dinosaurs. One of the leading theories is that a giant asteroid hit our planet millions of years ago. Researchers and paleontologists refer to this as the KT event. Interestingly, it was recently announced by scientists in Russia and South Korea that they've been working on bringing back prehistoric creatures to life. 
The team are currently carrying out research in a lab that cost $5.9 million to build. They hope to study animals that were once extinct by looking at their cells. Some of the creatures they are looking at bringing back include the cave lion, woolly mammoth, woolly rhino, and species of horses. At this moment in time, researchers have said this is near impossible to do with dinosaurs, but some of these Ice Age creatures still have intact tissues and cells which make the process much easier. This is no longer a fantasy. Scientists from Harvard and Russia have already delved into mixing genes to bring back species that are extinct. St. Augustine is one of the oldest cities in the United States. The St. Augustine Lighthouse that rises at the end of Anastasia Island in St. Augustine was built in 1874 and was one of a long series of lighthouses that have served the city since Francis Drake raided the village in 1586. St. Augustine has become a national historic site, attracting thousands of visitors every year. But visitors don't just come for the historical features. St. Augustine's years of service have left the lighthouse with many ghosts and paranormal events, which led Jason Hawes of Ghost Hunters to dub the lighthouse the Mona Lisa of the paranormal sites. An English student at the University of North Florida said the stories they tell are of a historical nature, so they interest visitors who want to know the past and those who focus on horror events. Although not a ghost hunter himself, the student said he saw many strange things in the lighthouse during his visit. He said he saw a dark figure in the tower, a hand that entered through the tower door and that the furniture moved by itself. He said that something had ripped his hair from his arm in the basement of the janitor's room. He also claimed that something also grabbed him by the ankle while he was walking. Other people who visited the lighthouse claimed to have seen a girl dressed in vintage clothes looking from the lighthouse door or standing near a window upstairs. In 2009, a cell tower technician took a picture of his colleague with a lighthouse in the background. However, upon viewing the image, he could see a girl with a long dress and long hair standing alone and staring out on the upper observation deck. It's not known who the individual is, but many who have visited the lighthouse have said that they've seen her and have further claimed that she is behind the many mysterious encounters that happen in this building. Another tourist said that while visiting the lighthouse they could hear faint laughter coming from one of the rooms. However, when the group entered the room there was no one inside. Interestingly, when the group entered the room they remarked on how cold it was. It had been a hot day but for some reason this room was ice cold. They couldn't explain where the laughter was coming from and why this room had the temperature it did. These and more ominous events have made the St. Augustine Lighthouse a popular tourist site for horror enthusiasts. Is Alcatraz haunted? Creepy ruins? Abandoned prison and scary island? It's fair to say that Alcatraz has all the possibilities to become a haunted hotspot. With centuries worth of history by the early 20th century, Alcatraz was not a place you'd hope to end up at. But is the isolated island really haunted? There are many stories from the island's time as a penitentiary. Supposedly, many prisoners still walk the island searching for retribution from their mistreatment at the island prison. Punishments at Alcatraz were harsh, and those found breaking rules were stripped naked and forced to be in a cell with no lights, sink, or mattress. To add to this, their only toilet was a hole in the ground. It's believed that many spirits can't move on from their final resting place. The stripped cell in particular sees lots of ghostly activity. One particular cell of note is cell 14D, the so-called dreaded cell. The story goes that this cell is the location of where one inmate, after screaming that some kind of creature was going to end his life, actually passed away. Through the night, the man claimed that something with glowing eyes was after him, and in the morning the man was found by guards, no longer alive, as well as a sudden change in energy upon entering the room. All of the cell blocks of the prison are full of activity. Blocks A and B often see reports of ghostly crying and wailing, perhaps the cries of prisoners who are tied to the island forever. Block C was the subject of much interest when a psychic visited the island and claimed to have come into contact with a spirit named Butcher. Prison records show that a man named Albi Maldovitz, a hitman who went by the name Butcher, passed away in Block C. 
The most famous inmate to ever step foot on Alcatraz Island was Al Capone. The gangster spent his last years alive in the high-security prison and eventually passed away from an STI that went untreated. Al Capone was noted to have played banjo with the prison band, often fearing for his own safety if he spent time in the communal prison yard. Capone managed to receive permission to practice in the shower room. Scarily, many people have reported that they have heard banjo playing through the prison walls, specifically coming from the shower room. Even those who are not familiar with Capone or Alcatraz's history have stated that strange banjo music could be heard in the prison without any identifiable source. Perhaps the ghosts of Alcatraz prison wander the island in the hope that they might be released. Screaming Skull of Burton Agnes Hall Burton Agnes Hall is a large mansion located in Yorkshire. It was built by Sir Henry Griffith during the 17th century. The most famous artifact of Burton Agnes Hall is a mysterious skull. It is believed that this is the skull of and Griffith, one of the daughters of Sir Henry Griffith. According to the legend, Sir Henry Griffith had three daughters and was one of them one day she was returning from a friend's house when she was attacked by ruffians. They left her severely wounded and was brought to Burton Agnes where she passed away after suffering from delirious fevers. Before her death, she told her sisters that her soul would not be able to rest in peace unless some part of her body remained in the beautiful mansion they lived in. However, when and passed away, her family did not respect her last wish, and she was buried in the local churchyard. Things took a strange turn when Anne's family started hearing sounds of and screaming and crying in different parts of the mansion. After a few days of hearing mysterious sounds and experiencing various supernatural phenomenon, and family decided that it would be best to honor her last wish. So they excavated her grave, removed her skull, and placed it in the house. It is believed that since that day the spirit of and has not bothered anyone. The mysterious screaming skull still rests in Burton Agnes Hall. The green children of Woolpit during the reign of King Stephen within the 12th century England One of the strangest stories of an ancient lost human civilization deep within the earth seemed to emerge from a small village in the middle of nowhere. According to records made in the 12th century, a report tells of a strange pair of abandoned children that had suddenly appeared in the small village of Woolpit located within Suffolk. That led to many of the local residents questioning the nature of the children and their origins. The immediate cause for the questioning was due to the fact that the two children both had dark green skin completely inhuman in nature and spoke an unexplainable language that none had ever heard before. According to the 12th century documents that detailed the fate of the children, the children were recorded to have been spotted by a group of located alongside a wolf pit that had been dug to get rid of the wolves in the area, as the villagers had been working on that year's harvest. The villagers all noted that the children had unexplainable green skin, spoke a strange unknown language and wore clothing that was completely unfamiliar to anything any of the villagers had ever seen before, though the exact description of the children's clothing is unknown. Fearing that the children were orphans or had come from a land that had recently been attacked, the villagers brought the children to the home of a man named Richard DeCon, of whom accepted to adopt the children as their foster parent. Richard DeCon, however, noted that the children refused to eat any kind of food offered to them as it was unfamiliar to them as food. It was due to this that the two siblings became malnourished and terribly sick. It was not until de Calnay offered the children a form of raw broad beans that the children started eating. Unfortunately for the boy, however, he would pass away shortly after. The girl would go on to recover and eventually lose her green color as she got on a far more natural diet. Over the years, she learned English and began to tell the villagers where she and her brother had come from. According to the girl, she and her brother came from a place known as St. Martin's Land. That was always in twilight and never had any stars or a sun in the sky. This led many of the villagers to believe that the siblings came from some underground lost civilization as she told that she only came to the village after getting lost in a cave with her brother and finding her way out into the village of Woolpit. The Yatin Demonic George Lukens Seen as one of the oldest documented demonic possessions in the modern day, the exorcism of George Lukens would go on to cause a tremendous controversy across England back in the late 1700s due to its frightening and completely unexplained nature. In the year 1788, a tailor by the name of George Lukens 
later dubbed the Yatin demonic, is believed to have become possessed by a demonic entity at the age of 44 for reasons not entirely known. According to a woman known as Mrs. Sarah Barber, she claims that as she was traveling through the village of Yatin Mendip, she had come across a man that suffered from an unknown condition in which the man would sing and scream in various pitches and sounds that did not sound like anything a normal man could have ever produced and would often declare that doctors and science could never fix him from his ailment. Mrs. Sarah Barber, fearing for the man's soul, immediately wrote a letter to the Reverend John Easterbrook, an Anglican vicar of the Holy Cross Church, about the man in the hopes that something could be done to assist him. Among her claims, Sarah Barber wrote that she had known the man when she had formerly resided in Yaton and attested that the man known as George Lukens had an extraordinarily good character and had attended every service of worship for most of his life. George Lukens claimed that the beginning of his demonic possession began when he had been acting in a Christmas pageant, when suddenly he felt a slap from an invisible hand that knocked him down at the age of 26. Shortly after that moment he had visited Dr. Smith, a renowned surgeon of Ray Tun, of whom was unable to help Lukens in his ailments. After a 20-week stay, with a number of physicians trying to help him, George Lukens was deemed incurable by the field of science and medicine and was forced to leave the hospital. It was that he had been possessed by seven demons and that he believed only seven clergymen could free his soul, though would not receive help for 18 years. Reverend Joseph Easterbrook, alongside seven clergymen, took George Lukens to the vestry at the Holy Cross Church and began their exorcism, which included songs, prayer, and casting the demons back to hell. Although no supernatural evidence was seen, after the exorcism took place, George Lukens was able to sing praises once again and demonstrated no further symptoms of his demonic possession. Many of the clergymen wrote that they believed skeptics would doubt their claims of battling the demons. However, they wrote their accounts regardless which were later published in the Gentleman's Magazine and the Historical Chronicle. Many would go on to criticize the event, claiming George Lukens was suffering from nothing more than epilepsy. However, no symptoms of mental illness ever returned nor did any of his ailments following the exorcism. For the rest of his natural life, we all go about our daily lives, sometimes forgetting that we're on a tiny rock traveling 2.2 million kilometers, or 1.3 million miles per hour. It's an uncomfortable truth that we are vulnerable within the universe. It's a fact that asteroids approach the Earth every year. There's never a guarantee of total safety, and it's just a matter of sheer luck as to whether we are directly hit. If an object were 20 miles wide heading towards Earth, we'd have as little as 20 years warning. It's hoped that Earth's largest space agencies and scientists could combine forces to create missiles to destroy the asteroid before it reaches our atmosphere. However, the chances of the succeeding may be rather slim, and it would be years before we could tell whether or not this idea was successful. Therefore, it's likely that alternative survival strategies would be formulated in the event of missiles failing to intercept the asteroid. In fact, a recent study was conducted a few days ago on the 26th of April, revealing to NASA that even the most powerful missiles would not be able to stop a large-scale asteroid colliding with Earth. The simulation showed scientists that the asteroid would be hardly affected, and that six months is not enough time to prepare a spacecraft to take out the asteroid. The test was called the Space Mission Options for the Hypothetical Asteroid Impact Scenario. And Lindy Johnson, NASA's planetary defense officer, said the following. Each time we participate in an exercise of this nature, we learn more about who the key players are in a disaster event and who needs to know what information. These exercises ultimately help the planetary defense community communicate with each other and with our governments to ensure we are all coordinated should a potential impact threat be identified in the future. End quote. Dr. Paul Kodo said the following, Hypothetical asteroid impact exercises provide opportunities for us to think about how we would respond in the event that a sizable asteroid is found to have a significant chance of impacting our planet. Details of the scenario, such as the probability of the asteroid impact, where and when the impact might occur, are released to participants in a series of steps over the days of the conference. Simulate how a real simulation might evolve. End quote. We have been hit by a number of asteroids in recent years. 
The evidence for this is ancient craters which can be found all over our planet. Even in recent times, asteroids have caused extensive damage to Earth. One example of this is an asteroid 66 feet wide that hit Russia back in 2013. Reports indicated that the blast damaged around 7,000 buildings and injured around 1,500 people within the surrounding area. Thor Vesta is one of the largest objects in the asteroid belt and is often described as a protoplanet. The fact that Thor Vesta is almost spherical means it narrowly avoids classification as a dwarf planet. Named after the Roman goddess of the Hafen household, Thor Vesta is the second largest asteroid after the dwarf planet series. Wider than England, Thor Vesta is estimated to have a surface area that is around the same size as that of Pakistan. Thor Vesta is the brightest asteroid that can be seen from Earth, and it was discovered back in 1802 by Henrik Albers. Sometimes Thor Vesta can even be seen by the naked eye. If Thor Vesta were to make contact with the Earth, it would cause devastation on an unthinkable scale. If the impact which led to the extinction of the dinosaurs is anything to go by, a direct hit from Verwester would cause mass fires, debris and smoke which would likely block out the sun, lowering temperatures to a point that it would take out the majority of Earth's species. The impact would cause earthquakes and enormous tsunamis, followed by volcanic regions forming around the impact zone. Chaos would take years to settle, and widespread extinction of Earth species would be inevitable. The impact could easily destroy huge mountain ranges such as the Himalayas, let alone cities such as New York and London. For Vesta is truly massive, accounting for almost 9% of the total mass of all asteroids. It's 50 times wider than the asteroid which caused the dinosaurs to become extinct. Therefore, the destruction it would cause is truly outside our imagination. Even an asteroid as small as the size of a house, hurling towards Earth at 30,000 miles per hour would cause a massive amount of damage. Thankfully, scientists have calculated that a direct hit from Thor Vesta is extremely unlikely. Currently, Thor Vesta is orbiting the Sun at a distance of 170 million kilometers, or 105 million miles from Earth. Scientists announced that last year on the 16th of July 2020, it was visible in the sky. Astronomers said it appeared as a faint yellow dot. Fortunately, a collision with an asteroid large enough to cause significant damage to the Earth is unlikely. However, it's not merely the work of science fiction as it's certainly not impossible. Large unknown asteroids could still be out there heading towards our planet. In his last book published in 2018, Stephen Hawking said that he believed an asteroid collision to be the biggest threat to the planet. Although NASA has done a great job at cataloging countless asteroids, they said that one recently slipped through. An asteroid by the name of 2019 OK made headlines around the world. This wasn't because of its size, but rather because of its sudden appearance. Our best scientists and researchers had no idea this object was flying past us until the last minute, at which point it would have been too late. This asteroid is estimated to be 57 to 130 meters in diameter, or 187 to 426 feet. It was the closest an asteroid had come to Earth in 2019. So what do you make of this recent simulation and the fact we won't be able to stop asteroids? Search for life outside our planet continues. Scientists have said that microbial life could exist within our solar system, saying that microorganisms and extremophiles could exist out in the far reaches of space. One place that solved particular interest is that of Saturn's moon Enceladus. According to NASA's official website, Saturn has 82 moons. 53 moons are confirmed in name, and another 29 moons are awaiting confirmation of discovery and official naming. Not much was known about Enceladus until Voyager 1 did a flyby. After this, the Cassini spacecraft passed nearby and enabled us to study the almost all-ocean moon in much more detail. Enceladus may seem insignificant when compared to Saturn's larger moons, such as Titan. Enceladus, though, is fascinating and has been at the center of a number of theories. Almost completely covered in ice, Enceladus has an enormous ocean underneath that icy crust that is home to some of the most interesting recent scientific discoveries. 
In late 2019, a team of scientists announced they had found what's described as an organic molecule thought to be essential for the development and presence of life. Head scientist Dr. Kawaja and his team were analyzing data collected from the core of Enceladus. This was collected by the Cassini spacecraft when they found a tiny organic compound that they said would be found deep in the ocean. This compound is found in amino acids that are also found on Earth, and this indicated that this moon of Saturn could be a likely candidate for life. As mentioned, the majority of Enceladus is covered in ice, but has an ocean that lurks just beneath it, sharing certain similarities with Earth's poles. Enceladus ice sheets release vapor and ice grains through any slight crack in the ice surface, and this is due to hydrothermal activity. The ice grains that are released have been key during this discovery, as that's where the molecule discovered was found. This molecule that's made up of nitrogen and oxygen released through the cracks of Enceladus surface is also found on Earth in essentially the same way. Earth's hydrothermal activity causes vents to release similar molecules. Further exploration and research missions are currently in the works in order to try and understand everything we can about this incredible moon. These research missions will hopefully uncover more about Enceladus, as we don't really know the extent of what other essential molecules and signs of life there could be. Scientists have suggested that within its dark oceans, eyeless creatures could exist, relying on senses other than their eyes to navigate. Scientists said that life needs energy, but said that Enceladus is an active moon, having all the right things for life to exist. NASA said the following on their website. Since the ocean in Enceladus supplies the jets and the jets produce Saturn's earring, to study material in the earring is to study Enceladus oceans. The earring is mostly made of ice droplets, but among them are peculiar nanograins of silica, which can only be generated where liquid water and rock interact at temperatures over 200 degrees. This, among other evidence, points to hydrothermal vents deep beneath Enceladus' icy shell not unlike the hydrothermal vents that dot Earth's ocean floor. With its global ocean, unique chemistry and internal heat, Enceladus has become a promising lead in our search for a world where life could exist. End quote. Astrobiologist Dr. Kirscherbaum said the following, the pressure and temperature differences between the Enceladus ocean floor and the ice cap above must be tremendous. In a dark subterranean world, perhaps like the underground oceans of Enceladus, Vision may be totally absent, and eyeless creatures could evolve a perfectly competent and rich communication using sound alone. End quote. Scientist Christine Ray said the following. The detection of molecular hydrogen in the plume indicated there is free energy available in the ocean of Enceladus. We compare our free energy estimates to the ecosystems on Earth and determine that overall our values for both aerobic and anaerobic metabolisms meet or exceed minimum requirements. These results indicate that oxygen production and oxidation chemistry could contribute to supporting possible life and a diverse microbial community on Enceladus. End quote. Scientists have said that Enceladus is the only confirmed current habitable environments beyond Earth and hope that NASA and other space agencies will investigate this moon further. Technically, though, we do have proof of life outside our planet, though this is because of humans. Back in 2019, an Israeli spacecraft tried to land on the lunar surface. However, the mission didn't go to plan, and the spacecraft ended up crash landing into the moon. This mission occurred on the 11th of April back in 2019. And now researchers are saying the lunar surface could be filled with tiny creatures. The original idea was to land a robotic lander that had tardigrades on it. Due to the unfortunate event though, it's not known if these small creatures survived. But scientists have said it's very likely due to how resilient they are. Scientists have called them extremophiles due to them being able to survive in such harsh conditions. And one of the things that researchers are doing right now is studying these creatures to see if we can replicate what they do. If we were able to take some of the tardigrades' abilities and place them in a human, it would make us much more superior. At the moment, the human body is not great at handling harsh conditions. In fact, for humans to survive in an environment, everything has to be exactly right. It's been estimated that tardigrades have been around for over 500 million years 
meaning they outlived the dinosaurs. Recently, scientists were taking samples from a subglacial lake in the Antarctic. After getting the samples tested, they made an unexpected discovery. The team had discovered tardigrades, with them saying they've never been found in this location, and it's still a mystery as to how they ended up there. Regardless, it shows us just how resilient these incredible creatures are. So what do you make of these interesting discoveries? And do you think there's life on Saturn's moon Enceladus? It's a well-known fact that when a top-secret aircraft is being made, the general public don't usually find out about it straight away. In fact, it can take years for this type of information to reach the masses, and sometimes it's not because the military wanted to tell us, but because there was a legal people had photographed said craft. One recent aircraft that's been talked about is that of the State Route 72. The Lockheed Martin State Route 72, also nicknamed the Son of Blackbird, is an American hypersonic aircraft currently under construction. It's the successor to the State Route 71 Blackbird, a plane that was able to reach speeds of 3,529 kilometers per hour or 2,200 miles per hour and heights of 85,000 feet. The State Route 72 aircraft will be the most impressive aircraft on the planet, having state-of-the-art hypersonic technology. Some websites even reporting that the State Route 72 will be able to strike targets anywhere in less than an hour. However, not everyone is entirely convinced that this aircraft is in its early stages, with some residents across the United States coming forward with their testimonies and photographs to prove that this hypersonic aircraft is currently flying around in our sky. As mentioned earlier, it can take a few years for the public to find out certain information and it's known that we have the capability to build these kinds of crafts because back in the 1960s we had the Lockheed State Route 71 Blackbird. There was nothing around at the time that could match it even today it holds the record as being the fastest aircraft ever created back in the 1960s this incredible aircraft was able to reach. Speeds of 3,529 kilometers per hour or 2,200 miles per hour. So knowing that we had this kind of tech back in the 60s, it's easy to see why people believe that the State Route 72 is currently flying around in our sky. One person was driving through Wyoming a few years back when they said they saw a mysterious craft above them. They said that these objects looked like two giant black triangles. Said due to where they were positioned in the sky it was hard to get a decent photograph of them. However they did manage to snap a photograph and you can clearly see that this aircraft is in the shape of a triangle. It's very rare for people to see these things during the daytime. The eyewitness said the following, On April 10th, 2010, I was driving east on Interstate 1815 when I looked north and saw two black, wide, triangular-shaped flying crafts. I could see their shape as the lights from my truck reflected off one of the bottom of the slow-moving crafts. There was a light on each of the points of the triangle. One light was red, one was blue, and the third looked like a white or off-white. One craft was following the other, and they were flying low west along Interstate 80. They were flying slow enough that I was able to watch them for a while. End quote. Something to notice that, as of right now, no military has come forward to claim that they own these crafts, although sightings of them have been made for at least the last 50 years. These black triangles are somewhat of a mystery, with UFO believers saying that they're not the same as our crafts, while others have said that the latest line of stealth aircrafts. Others have suggested that these large black triangles are actually the State Route 72, and those who've studied these hypersonic aircrafts have said this does add up. Various eyewitnesses who've seen these black triangles have said they've been seen leaving an area at extreme speeds, and it would make sense as we're just learning about these crafts now. And in the past, when we found out about new stealth aircrafts, they've already been in operation for a few decades. So these sightings of black triangles that people have been reporting for the last 20 years could be the State Route 72 hypersonic aircraft. However, this isn't set in stone, and there's others who have said that we currently don't have anything that could match that of the mysterious black triangles. This begs the question then, what are these things? For over 40 years, the triangle UFOs caused much debate. It's perhaps one of the most common shaped UFOs that's been seen. These crafts are often reported as being silent. 
have been seen on a number of occasions just hovering in the sky. Sightings of the triangle UFOs often come in waves, with people seeing dozens at a time. They're also perhaps the most photographed UFO as well, with even news programs covering them. What's most impressive about these crafts is that they've been witnessed hovering motionless in the sky and then suddenly making a high-speed departure. Pilots have said they're faster than any conventional aircraft that's currently in the sky. The State Route 72 program was mentioned by the Executive Vice President of Aeronautics, Lockheed Martin, and this was during an aerospace exhibition in Fort Worth. They said the following, although I can't go into specifics, let's just say the Skunks Works team in California is doubling down on our commitment to speed. Hypersonics is like stealth, it's a disruptive technology and will enable various platforms to operate at two to three times the speed of the Blackbird. Security classification guidance will only allow us to say the speed is greater than Mach 5. As mentioned though, a lot of people don't buy this and say that the aircraft is already in the sky. In fact, according to one source, they stated that an unmanned subscale aircraft was observed flying into the U.S. Air Force's Plant 42, which is the headquarters of Skunk Works. When those that saw and heard the aircraft asked Lockheed Martin on whether or not this was the state Route 72, they declined to comment. Other people across the U.S. have said they've seen stealth-looking aircrafts in the sky during the daytime, but note that they're too high and fast to photograph. As of right now, it's incredible to think we have an aircraft that's able to do these kinds of spins. So what do you make of this interesting image? And do you think that the State Route 72 is already flying around in our sky? Also, what do you think the mysterious black triangles are that have been seen in our sky now for almost 50 years? Trial cameras allow us to see things when we're not around. They're usually placed on properties or in woodlands in order to see wildlife, or in some cases they're used as security. They work by detecting motion so anything that walks past will trigger the camera. In the past, various interesting photographs have been taken, and it's a great way to capture nocturnal wildlife that you usually wouldn't see during the daytime. However, these trial cameras have detected things that aren't so easy to explain, leaving the owners confused and causing them to seek out other people's opinion in order to explain what they captured. One photograph was this one. It was sent to the Sasquatch Chronicles, a website dedicated to investigating Bigfoot and other large humanoids. The owner of the photograph didn't detail whether it was their trial camera that took the photo. They just said they wanted answers for what was captured. The image was shared in 2017, and since then, those who have seen it can't agree on what it shows. There's some who have said the entity in the photo may be a Bigfoot stretching his arms, while others said that when you zoom in, you're able to see two sets of eyes, something that many didn't pick up on. One person said the following about the image. This is one of the creepiest images that I've seen. You can clearly see the outline of this thing, and that the two glowing lights are located where a head would be. This makes me think that something is there. Also, it appears that there's another pair of eyes below the taller entity. End quote. Or this person said the following. I have a trial camera, but I've never seen anything like this. Sometimes animals will run or fly past and you get this weird motion blur, but it doesn't look like this. This image doesn't look blurry. It just looks like whatever is there seems semi-transparent or possibly hairy. I have no idea on this one end quote others though didn't think it showed an anomaly and said it's just a tree and the reflection you see is being made by the branches some experienced people though said that rarely will a trial camera give these false triggers and said that most people mount them to something sturdy in order to avoid this. Others followed on and said it may have been a ghost, while some said it looks like a Bigfoot with its arms stretched out. Many across the United States have reported encounters with Bigfoot-like creatures, with some researchers saying that different areas have different humanoids. For example, throughout North America, many residents have encountered the standard Bigfoot creatures, which is described as being 6 to 10 feet tall, having thick brown hair, and having a loud roar which can be heard in the forest at night. While some residents have said that another large humanoid creature lives down in Texas and Georgia, and this one is known as the skunk ape. Those who've seen it have said it's large. As black fur glowing red eyes and gives off a foul odor. 
In fact, the few people that have encountered it have said that one of the reasons they did is because they picked up on the bad smell and this caused them to go looking for the source of the smell, only to run into a primitive-looking beast that held above them. Most reported sightings have come from residents in Florida, with locals saying the creature was often being seen during the 1960s and 1970s. After this, the encounters dwindled, but some residents did say that every so often someone will report seeing it. This happened in the year 2000, when a woman said she heard strange noises outside her house. She decided to leave some apples outside in the hopes of luring the creature in. And this worked, as a few days later the creature returned and ate all the apples, and this was when she took a photograph of it. Years later though, Bigfoot enthusiasts along with scientists have agreed that the image shows an orangutan. Nearly everyone around the world has heard of Sasquatch, or a creature similar in design and behavior. This has led to a tremendous amount of reports, witness sightings, video evidence, physical evidence. Footprints and theories into the creature that cannot entirely be explored within just one video. Countless reports have been made throughout the years, some that have been explained and others that have remained a mystery. Back in 1925, a private photographer of whom was a proud and widely respected member of the Royal Geographical Society named N.A. Tombazzi wrote an incredible report that first popularized the Sasquatch creature eventually led to his own reputation later being completely destroyed. It was common for Tom Barcy to find himself in strange, isolated places around the world, as he would often spend countless days alone in an effort to catalog geographical strata or find gorges or valleys in the hopes of making revolutionary geographical discoveries. As he found himself exploring the areas deep within the Zemiglasia, Don Bars claimed to have spotted a rather strange creature standing no more than 200 yards away from him. The creature, as he described it, appeared to be that of a humanoid creature, in which he writes the following, unquestionably, the figure and outline was exactly like a human being, walking upright and stopping occasionally to pull at some bushes. It shows up dark against the snow, and as far as I could make out, were no clothes of any kind. The sighting of the creature continued for a minute, before the creature ran off and disappeared completely from his sight. Baffled by this sighting, he quickly gathered as much data and information as he could. He noted that he was approximately 15,000 feet above sea level and gathered information about the bushes, plant life, and environment of the region. Shortly after gathering this information, Tom Barzi left the area to locate his companions. When he returned roughly about two hours later, Tom Barzi and his team scoured the mountain and found evidence of footprints in which he described as being similar to that of a man's. However, the feet appeared to be seven inches long and four inches wide, but were undoubtedly that of a bipedal creature. It was his written report and gathered evidence that would help lay the foundation of the Yeti creature, and would lead the first expeditions into uncovering the truth. So what do you make of this interesting photo? Does it show a Bigfoot or a ghost? Or is it just the trees in the background?